are hearing harrowing testimony from those who say that they were targeted by former President Trump and his supporters after the 2020 election. Republican state officials and an election worker from Georgia testified before the January 6th committee yesterday. They said despite being targeted by the president of the United States, they stood their ground and they paid the price. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one. So Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joins us now with uh, more talk about the January 6th uh, hearings. Major, uh, I got to tell you, yesterday's hearings I really thought was a doozy. I think I had a, an idea of what we're going to hear already because many of these election officials have talked publicly. There are books written, uh, you know, phone calls released. We know. But I think I was really struck by the um, attacks on their career, the attacks on their life and, the, the, and the, their safety of their family, the extent um, that this campaign sort of bled into all aspects of their life was, was stunning to me. And it's worth pointing out, Anne-Marie, that Ruby Freeman, Shea Moss, the two witnesses who testified about their experience in Georgia, are illustrative of hundreds, if not thousands, of Americans. If this committee wanted to, it could bring in local election officials for five months and have testimony almost exactly like we heard from Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman. Republicans, Democrats, nonpartisan people who just work elections but got caught up in this mania set in motion, reinforced and amplified by President Trump that something suspicious, nefarious or bordering on theft occurred with the 2020 election when it plainly did not. Their lives were and have been deeply impacted, in some cases ruined because they still to this day, I want the audience to understand this, this is still happening. You mentioned books about this. I have a book coming out in September, co-written with our election law expert, David Becker. And we talked to election officials across the country. In 2022, they are still getting complaints, bitter emails, phone calls, harassment about the 2020 election. And they're girding, and they're very cautiously girding for what's gonna come through these midterm elections. So you have, <clears throat> excuse me, a psychology in some parts of the country that is so hostile to this basic work of American democracy that people's lives are being overturned and ruined based on a complete, though elaborate, and oft-repeated falsehood. And Republicans who voted for and support President Trump were also part of, of this campaign. Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, for example, um, we all remember from the time he was the one holding press conferences saying, cut it out, we need to be professional. What did he say in his testimony and how has the former president responded? So he said, Brad Raffensperger, on behalf of the state of Georgia, the votes are the votes. They were checked not once not twice, but three times. And the most incendiary allegations of some sort of fraudulent activity, either dealing with so-called suitcases of ballots or USB drives that had data about the election being mishandled, all of that was investigated by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, repeatedly. Two U.S. attorneys, both of whom were chosen by President Trump, looked into this and referred their findings about no fraud, no consequential misdeeds to the Justice Department, run by then Attorney General Bill Barr, all found the same result. These conspiracy theories were not based in any kind of traceable reality. They were just that, conspiracy theories. And yet, President Trump badgered Brad Raffensperger and, again, allowed this environment of basically grassroots intimidation to come around their homes, to have people threaten them with violence, have Brad Raffensperger, as he said about his wife, Trish, who he's been married to for more than 40 years, threatened with sexualized violence. That happened in Georgia. It happened in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, even states where this election wasn't close 
and Trump won handily. I've talked to election officials in those states, and they thought they were safe. This wouldn't come to my state. Trump won big. There wasn't even a controversy. It's still happening there. That's how deep-rooted but misguided this mania has become. And I was also struck by sort of the general disregard <clears throat> for the welfare of people, as you point out, who were supporters of the president. And I think about those fake electors. So these are not elected officials, right? These are people that supported the president so much that they were willing to sort of go ahead with this scheme, plot, whatever, without the knowledge that there were attorneys from the campaign who were running in the other direction, who were clearly saying that this is not legal. Um, and I've heard critics of, of this panel say, well, there's no cross, you know, there's no cross examination here. I, I'm, I'm wondering if whether or not you're getting a sense that House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy regrets not allowing GOP members on the panel and whether or not that might have been a miscalculation. Well, he's certainly getting some criticism from former President Trump about that. But I want to remind the audience, and I know I remind the audience of this every chance I get, but it's an important point. There was bipartisan legislation to create a national commission into the January 6th attack. And it was passed by the House of Representatives with a lot of Republican support. Then it died in the Senate. Senate Republicans killed that. Do you know what the termination date of the report of that bipartisan National Commission was supposed to have been? December 31st, 2021. It would be all over by now. If Republicans really wanted to have the ability to have a fully bipartisan committee with equal budgets and equal authority to grant and issue subpoenas, they had it and they killed it themselves. And then Kevin McCarthy, as you said, pulled Republicans off this. But what's the, what's the cross-examination of Rusty Bowers? Did you support President Trump? Oh, yes. Would you support him again? Oh, yes. But you wouldn't violate your oath. No, sir, I would not. You wouldn't violate the Constitution. No, sir, I wouldn't. Well, what about the bamboo ballots in Arizona? They didn't exist. What about the misuse of Sharpies to get fraudulent votes? That never happened. I mean, what is the line of cross-examination? There isn't anyone. And if there were, Republicans would be staging counter press conferences either before and after each hearing. And they aren't, because they don't have a case, not on the fundamentals of what happened in the 2020 election. So I think whatever regrets Republicans have, they're essentially adopting a what are you talking about? We didn't watch that sort of a political approach, which for many of its supporters will suffice, but it won't bury the truth. All right, Major Garrett joining us from Washington. Thanks very much. And we sure. will have full coverage of tomorrow's hearing throughout the day. And remember, you can stream the testimony live starting right here at 3 p.m. Eastern.